So Dr. Ross, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers out there and tell us who you are and kind of what you do. Yes. So my name is Lindsay Ross and I am a neurosurgeon. I graduated from my neurosurgery residency last year and I am completing a complex spine fellowship in Los Angeles. And um, I'm really excited to be here and speak with you and share my story today. Absolutely. First of all, congratulations. Um, as we spoke earlier, um, I, I don't know too many black neurosurgeons or especially females. So it was really inspiring to actually meet you and the opportunity to have you on the channel today. Uh, can you talk about some of the education that's required to become a neurosurgeon? Uh, I imagine it's a very long road, kind of similar to you know orthopedic spine surgery. Sure. Yeah. Um, as you discussed first, um, there aren't many um, black female neurosurgeons. I know. Uh, Vanita was on your yep. show not too long ago, and she's a good friend. And we, most of us, know each other or know of each other. Um, and again, there's a lot that goes into completing this training. First, you do your four years of undergrad, um, and then you have to get into medical school. You got to take your MCAT, and that's four years. And then after that, you do a neurosurgery residency, which is seven years with mm -hmm. one year that's a, a research year. So all in all, it takes about 15 years to get to this point. And then if you want to do a fellowship and do additional training, you add one or two more years. Um, so you really have to be patient, mm -hmm. um, especially I think in a male dominated field, you do have to be patient, not only with the time, but um, the emotional aspects that come into being in an environment that's different or you might not see other people that look like you. Um, in neurosurgery in particular, I find it very um, emotionally challenging as patients um, are often very sick and they pass away and, and dealing with death um, all the way from pediatrics and babies all the way to adults and grandmothers, but there, I've seen a lot of death. So dealing with that in neurosurgery is, is difficult, but also, um, you know, dealing with the physical aspects, um, the difficult surgeries, the long surgeries, yep. um, the long hours um, in the operating room, and then afterwards seeing your patients and taking mm -hmm. care of them in the intensive care unit. Um, so physically, emotionally, and intellectually, it's difficult. Um, you know, the surgeries that we do in the brain are three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. um, the, the way you position the patient is, is an art in itself, yeah. which I think is very different than a lot of other surgery, uh, surgery subspecialties. Um, so I, I found it very, very challenging and um, rewarding at the same time to be able to master things that are very difficult. Um, and I love uh, helping patients. The reason why I became a neurosurgeon in the first place was I had a very good friend um, who was struck by a motor vehicle um, mm -hmm. when I was in medical school between my first and second year. Mm -hmm. I was doing research at the hospital that I'm at now and uh, he came to the hospital and um, he was very sick. He was in the intensive mm -hmm. care unit. He was in a coma and he had fractured his spine. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the neurosurgeons that came and they were caring for him and, and I was learning about being a neurosurgeon at that time. I was doing some neuroscience research actually in the lab and I spent all day from morning till night kind of learning about neuroscience from the bench to the bedside and really kind of fell in love with the, um, with the field and eventually my friend woke up and he started walking and he is a wonderful um, amazing person to this day and um, so that was very inspirational and he knows that he was very inspirational to me and kind of changed the course of what I wanted to do in my life and I think when things like that happen yeah. you, you've got to listen yeah. you know you've got to listen to them and, and take heed and, and move forward with, with what you know the world is trying to tell you what your purpose is so yeah absolutely and I think it's very important for people to see people like you mm -hmm who may not think that becoming a neurosurgeon is possible or any type of physician. So, you know, my goal is to try to, you know, show younger kids and the up and coming generation that um, there's someone out there that looks like you, talks like you, dresses like you, <laughs> that's in these very prestigious fields. So I uh, applaud you for that. Yeah. Uh, did you always know that you wanted to do neurosurgery, that's like in a, medical school? Yeah, or? That's a great question. I actually did not think about neurosurgery yeah. at all which is very different than a lot of my colleagues who said they want to be a brain surgeon for yeah. their entire life. 
Um, I was I was very into my community. Mm -hmm. um, I actually was interested in being a family medicine doctor, an wow. internist, and I've always been interested in policy. Okay. Um, so some very fuzzy things that weren't very neurosurgical mm -hmm. related. Um, and I actually ended up during my research year, um, I was a White House fellow and I oh. worked for the Obama administration and then oh. the Trump administration during the transition um, on healthcare policy. Um, so I got to delve into that other aspect when I had been working so hard to be a neurosurgeon for six years. Mm -hmm. um, I am somehow trying to bridge both of those fields together to stay true to who I am yep. um, and both of my passions. That's awesome. Um, can you speak about, you know, being a neurosurgeon as well as having a family, you know, marriage, can you speak about that balance? Oh. People, some people may think that, you know, it's not possible to have a busy lifestyle as well as have life outside of medicine. Right. But it seems like you're doing that quite well. <laughs> no, that's a great question. And I think really a key to whatever career you choose is to be happy and mm -hmm. so finding what makes you happy mm -hmm. and I know that having a family is very important to mm -hmm. me so I need to figure out a way to put all of that together all my passions to be happy um, and I luckily found somebody in medical school who's like oh great you're gonna be a doctor yeah. great let me stick with you I don't yeah. think you realize that uh, it was gonna be yeah. seven eight <laughs> years later and finally yeah. you know I finish and I'm actually a real doctor but um, you know, he was very supportive yeah. of me and we uh, got married during residency mm -hmm. and I had a baby when I was doing my research year and I was a chief resident mm -hmm. and I had uh, a newborn and wow. you know, there were days sometimes when I didn't see my newborn um, because I had to, you know, take care of my patients and that was really important for me to, to be there for my patients. Um, so that was really difficult yeah. um, for me, but you know, you have to um, you know, make those choices day by day and you try your best to extend yourself yep. to everything that, you know, that your family that needs you and the work that needs you, you try to extend yourself. And I'm actually a really good multitasker, mm -hmm. so this works well and I'm a very yeah. happy person and I, and I often see the good and happiness in people in the world. So I think that mentality helps me to manage all that as well. Yeah, that's very refreshing to hear. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure for the viewers as well. Is, you know it, there's some people who have doubts of you know having a family and being in a prestigious and busy career as a neurosurgeon so um, what is a typical day for you I know you're in your fellowship now how do your days usually look yeah um, so as a fellow I really get to delve down into complex spine and I'm not really focusing too much on the other aspects of neurosurgery. So this allows me a little bit more time to spend time with patients in mm -hmm. clinic and kind of really delve into, you know, who needs surgery, why do they need mm -hmm. surgery, and how they recover and who does well and who might not do as well. Um, so um, two days a week usually I do a clinic all mm -hmm. day and that'll be like nine to five and then uh, two days a week uh, we will do surgery and that's usually 7 15 start um, until maybe five or six in the evening and then usually one day I get to spend um, on my research hmm. um, uh, so that's a really large aspect of, of uh, fellowship is not only your clinical training but continuing your academic and um, research training. Awesome. Um, what advice do you have for students out there that may be interested in medicine, but also neurosurgery? What would you say to them? Yeah, I think um, you know it's something that you can do, um, and there are people out there that um, look like you, that have your same interests, and um, you might not see them on a day-to-day -day basis, but they're out there, and um, you just really need to put your mind to it and um, there will be times when you will fail mm -hmm. and there's been plenty of times when I've failed along the way but really I just really take no for or don't take no for an answer yep. and I will keep trying and I will keep trying if it's your passion um, you know you will you will um, be able to master whatever it is organic chemistry yep. or the MCAT or getting into the residency that you want. I think everybody has their own path and it, everyone's not always linear and all it matters is, is that you're there at the end. Yeah, and one of my mentors always stated in medical school that failure is not in the falling down, it's in the failure to get back up and try again. So, and okay. just like you, I've failed many times too. So, yeah. 
Um, if students wanted to, or anyone out there wanted to get in touch with you, uh, how can they do that? Yeah, so um, my Instagram handle is Dr. Brain Girl, and feel free to follow me and comment on um, my family posts or my career posts. Um, and you can also find me on LinkedIn, Lindsay Ross. Awesome. Well, Dr. Ross, real inspiration to a lot of people out here. Um, it's a pleasure to and honor to have you on the channel today, and you know, congrats on all your success. Thank you, Dr. Webb. You're welcome. Everyone else, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.